Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys and today I'm going to be showing you how to adapt the DJ Buggy Car by Fisher Price. Um, this is a little older version. It's changed kind of cosmetically. Uh, this is one that we got secondhand, but I don't really anticipate there being any difference in terms of this version to the current version. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. So uh, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe. It really does help us out in a huge way. So thank you in advance for that. Um, also, uh, Switch Adapted to Toys, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we can only do this uh, through your donations. So I ask if you're able uh, to consider donating to our mission, you can do so on our website. That's www.switchtoys.org. And there we've got a bunch of free resources all about Switch Adapting Toys. So uh, check that out, and uh, thank you so much in advance. Um, but yeah, I guess without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, we're gonna start by removing the four screws that are on the bottom of the toy. So with those four screws removed, we should be able to separate the two halves of the toy. And you can set this top half aside. All right, so on the circuit board, there's this little disc right here. And this is what the button actually makes contact with when you press it to turn the toy on. Uh, so we're essentially going to bypass this disc by soldering our headphone jack wires to this little dot right here and this little dot right here. Uh, if you're ever trying to figure out a toy on your own, you can use some tweezers and just kind of play around with points on the board. Um, and I can tell that whenever I touch these two points together, it turns the toy on. So we should be able to solder those and be set. So the next thing we need to do is drill our hole for our headphone jack wire. And I think a good place to do that is gonna be right in the back, right in this little clear section here, uh, because that will kind of get us into this inner part of the toy, which will lead to our circuit board. Um, so I think that's gonna be a, a good a spot as any. So we'll drill our hole, then we'll prepare our headphone jack and get to soldering. When you drill your hole, you wanna make sure that your drill bit is the same diameter of the headphone jack wire that you're gonna use. And all you do is just drill a hole. like that. All right, so for your headphone jack wires, uh, the, the easiest route is to go ahead and find a mono headphone jack. Um, they, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, mono headphone jacks basically just have two wires. They're also called uh, TS connectors, which stands for uh, tip and sleeve. So if you go on Amazon and, and search for a TS headphone jack, you can probably find one, or it might be called a mono headphone jack. Um, you can use a stereo headphone jack and we've got plenty of videos kind of ex explaining how to use a stereo headphone jack uh, but to be honest it is it's worth a little extra money just to get the mono uh, because it makes things so much easier so uh, if you have a stereo check out our other videos we've, we've, we've done it a hundred times but we're just going to go straight to the mono jack this time all right so i'm going to fish my wire through my toy and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this long because I'm assuming the child is gonna wanna be kind of playing with it. And I'm assuming that a button's hooked up to it. So the, the more length, I think the better. And what I like to do first is get a little bit of solder on these points. Uh, this one already has some solder, but I wanna get a little solder on this point right here. So since I'm soldering directly to this board, I'm gonna go ahead and use a flux pen. And that basically just helps me it kind of cleans it off a little bit, but also helps prevent uh, the soldering iron from burning the circuit board. All right, so once your soldering iron's heated up, all I'm gonna do is just kind of touch that little dot, and then I'm gonna bring in my solder, and just try to get a little glob of solder on that little dot that I showed you. It seems a lot harder than it is. I promise you, it's not that big a deal. All right, so now that I've got some solder on that circuit board, I wanna get a little solder on these wires as well. Uh, these wires come pre-soldered, but I kind of like just to have a little bit extra on there. All right, so now that I've got some solder on my wires I'm, and I got some solder on my circuit board, now we can go ahead and solder our wires to the circuit board. So I'm just gonna basically heat up that solder that I put on the wires. And just get it to connect. So give your wires just a little bit of a tug uh, to make sure that there's a, a good, strong connection there. 
And now we can go ahead and test it. So we wanna make sure that everything works before we put it back together. All right, so I plugged in our switch. Uh, this is actually our 3D printed mini switch. You can find the files on our website where you can go ahead and print your own. Uh, and honestly, it's a very good switch. Um, so I got it plugged in. Let's make sure that it works before we put it back together. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of take some of the slack out of this wire. And what we wanna do is uh, put a zip tie around the wire on the inside of the toy. Uh, what that's gonna do is basically act like a barrier. So if a child were to yank on the cord, uh, it doesn't just pull the entire cord out of the toy. Um, so I'm just gonna cinch it down nice and tight, and I'm gonna go ahead and snip off the extra zip tie. And what I like to do just so I make sure that that zip tie doesn't slip is uh, put a little super glue on it, uh, just a little bit around that zip tie, just kind of locks everything in place, just like that. And you can either wait for it to dry or you can get yourself a little bit of activator. And that basically dries that glue instantly. All right, so this little rubber gasket for the button fell out when I was doing things. So I'm just gonna make sure I get that put back in. And then we can go ahead and put the two halves back together. And we can screw in those four screws. All right, so now that we've got it put back together, let's give it another test and make sure that everything still works. There we go. All right, so that's it. If you liked this video or if you found it helpful, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe because we're posting new videos all the time. Uh, we'd love to know if you adapted this toy, so uh, leave a comment if you were able to adapt it. Uh, if you ran into any issues, let us know in the comments, and that way we can kind of help troubleshoot those issues. Um, and if you've got a toy that you just really want us to adapt, uh, let us know in the comments. That way we uh, can try to get that done for you. And like I said at the beginning of this video, Switch Adapted Toys, we're a nonprofit organization. We're 501c3 tax status. Um, it, we really can only do this with your support and your donations. So if you're able or willing to donate to Switch, you can do so on our website, which is www.switchtoys.org. Uh, your support allows us to make these videos, create these resources, and we've got a lot of exciting things that we want to do in the future. And the only way to do it is with your support. So if you're able or willing, it really does mean the world to us. So, so thank you in advance for that. If you want to find out more about Switch Adapted Toys, you can do so on our website. Again, it's www.switchtoys.org. Uh, there we've got a, a ton of free resources all about switch adapting toys including files for you to 3D print your own switch button. Um, so check those out. And if you've got a group or an organization and you want to adapt toys kind of on a bigger scale for people in your community. Uh, what we do here locally in Columbia is a, a local nonprofit uh, donates a, a bunch of toys every year. It's called Pascal's Pals. They are fantastic. They donate a bunch of toys every year and we get community members to help us adapt them and we give them all away free at Christmas time. Um, so every year we do about two to 300 toys. So if that's something that you're interested in bringing to your community, uh, you could form what we call a switch chapter and we kind of help you walk you through that process. We've been doing it now for six or seven years and it's become a really big success. And now we've got chapters all across the country. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, you can find out more information on our website as well. Lastly, if you're interested in a switch adapted toy, but doing it yourself just isn't your thing, uh, we do have an Etsy shop where we sell some pre-adapted toys that are ready to play with. Uh, I'll adapt them for you and ship them out. Uh, the proceeds there just help support what we're doing here. So it's just another way to support our mission of making play possible. And I'll put a link to our Etsy shop in the description. All right, so that's it. Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, my name is Eric with Switch Adapted Toys, and we'll see you next time. Switch Adapted Toys, making play possible.